So, hello everybody. I would like to thank you all for taking part in this session. In this session, we are going to give you a tour of our brand new and dynamic admin user interface that we have recently integrated into Carbonio Community Edition. This is Sharif and today we have among us someone special, the product owner at Jextras, Luca Arkara. Hi Luca, thank you for joining us. Hi guys. Thank you too. So in this session, we're going to lead you through this admin user interface so that you can understand what it does, what makes it special and how you can use it at its best. By the way, this session is being recorded, so don't worry about it. In a few days, it will be available to you via email and it will also be available to you on, on our different social media platforms so that you can watch it later and you can also share it to your other peers and networks. Before starting the main tool, I would like to give you a very short introduction of Carbonio Community Edition. It has been since a year now that we have launched Carbonio Community Edition. A 100% open source and free digital workspace that you can download from our website and you can use it. Carbonio Community Edition is basically target those users who wants to master their daily workloads uh, with all the necessary tools in a single platform like using the emails, contacts, calendars. But most importantly, Carbonio Community Edition focuses and helps those users who cares about their digital sovereignty, their data sovereignty, and who wants to have all the controls over their data. It's a private platform. That's why when you are using it, you know where your data is stored. And giving back the control of the data to its owner is our sole and foremost mission. With that note, I'd like to ask Luca and basically I'd like to take this opportunity as this, uh, this opportunity to ask Luca about what was their mission during the development and the behind this product. If you could tell us something about it, Luca. Sure, with pleasure. Thanks, Sharif. So, consider that even today, in 2022, mail is still the main communication we use every day. Uh, even after more than 50 years, the mail was born. Uh, every communication, every task, every also service activation, such as the 101 communication or basic messaging, still need mail to probably work. And uh, the the main point is that uh, when MAVE was born, it was born in a climate of trust, transparency, and the need to share information. Why during the year, the other kind of usage of the mail, uh, not overrised uh, or uh, threats like spam, virus, or Troy, make oh, more difficult for the user trust this kind of technology. So what happened is that uh, during this, uh, this year, several technologies has been added to the initial idea of the SMTP protocol and uh, uh, to protect user against this kind of threats. So uh, feature like the mask authentication, the RPL, the anti-spam, antivirus, uh, the signature or uh, up to the the mark or the latest stuff on technologies. And this has made the whole system about uh, electronic communication more complex to be installed and harder to be managed. And time after time, people start moving from uh, owning their own infrastructure to use this service provided by uh, different providers, different companies that provide the email as a service. 
maybe sometime with some freedom business model uh, to avoid people thinking about uh, the infrastructure and starting using the mail uh, as a service. More complex uh, means more harder to manage uh, and fewer providers were available to do it. And so in the end, uh, what we have today is that there is uh, a small number of centralized uh, systems that manage most of the mail that every day the user exchange between them. But uh, whenever you use one of the systems, your data need to be analyzed, connected, and sometimes maybe used for marketing or uh, authorized or not scope. This is basically, it was uh, move us uh, into be decarbonic. So the idea was uh, to be able to give user the possibility to keep this data back again and to own their own email infrastructure without being forced to master all the complexity that today there is behind the email technology. And maybe not only email, because today the email is a commodity uh, and each company needs to invest more time or on their business rather than on the communication itself. And so we want to avoid the admin needs to study the wool stack or uh, understand how to configure the wool stack. And so basically our vision is to bring a product that uh, is secure and reliable, but uh, must be also easy to install, easy to configure, easy to update in order to allow admin to focus on the work of the company, not only the work about communication. Yeah, uh, you said very important few facts that the, fo uh, the idea behind this product is not only make it easy and se uh, no, secure, but also make it easy for admins and the users so that they feel the ease while accessing it, while using it. So, Luca, could you please tell us some key features that from your perspective, but uh, or you think that can be useful for our users? Yes. Now, first of all, consider that Carbonium cover all the needs for electronic communication in one single product, in one single infrastructure. And this means that uh, there is no need uh, to interconnect connect this product uh, that has been designed for specific tasks. So all those events uh, has been already bundled in just one infrastructure and has already configured to work together. And this helps the admin to be more focused on the the day-by-day -day business. So, for example, also the UI has been, has been designed to allow admin to focus on the domain management because in that they spend most of the time managing their user account, answering the question, checking if everything is working and not just spending time changing configuration of each single product. And there is a strong separation between uh, what is the infrastructure service uh, and what is the domain uh, and the user configuration. This also allow admin to assign a specific domain uh, to specific delegated admin uh, and uh, each domain admin can work a focused on his user. Okay. Thank you, Nika, for all these facts and information. I'm not gonna take any more of your time. Let's start the tour and the floor is yours. <laughs> okay. So, uh, let me show something also to understand uh, what are the most important key features that there is uh, uh, under this, this product. So, let me share my screen now. So I can provide you an idea of our product. 
Okay, so uh, first of all, the entire product is uh, uh, React based. So uh, it is a web application uh, already tra translated in all the different languages. So in this case, you are seeing my own language. That is Italian. And once you are logged in, you are inside the main infrastructure, the main dashboard of this UI. So this basically provides you a uh, like, uh, dashboard that uh, shows all the list of your server just to have uh, an idea of, for example, the version you are running on if there is uh, some need of update, and quick access, for example, to all your accounts or all your mailing list. From this button, you can directly go to the management of the user of your account. And as you can see, there is also the option to manage some global configuration, the direct configuration about the domain, and configuration of the objects of the domain. Okay, and Luca, I so, want to just interrupt uh, for one second. Uh, I'd like to uh, request you one thing that if possible, could you please just zoom in the page a little more so that it can be more clearly visible for our viewers? Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah, now it's better. I hope that now is Yeah, now it's better. Perfect. <laughs> so, uh, coming back, basically, we have uh, the interface is designed into three different uh, spaces. So, you have the top bar, the primary bar, and the secondary bar that's allowing you to manage different part of the system. So, as you can see, there is the management of domain, of the storage, of the class of service, and of the primary, the privacy setting. Managing the system allows you, for example, to change uh, the way in which the server is published uh, or the way in which there is the authentication of the user. So, how the user can uh, authenticate over the system, or the way in which the virtual host is resolved and the certificate is managed. So, for example, you can load a specific certificate for your system in order to using the SSL encryption. That is one of the features we are working on to allow admin uh, to use uh, out of the box uh, um, integration with, for example, let's encrypt or zero SSL. Then you can manage all your account, and each domain has uh, its own account management in order to help the domain to split the work for each one. So, for example, if I change my domain, I can see the different account managed by the other one. Managing an account means that basically you can, uh, for example, change. Look at the space uh, user. What is the session uh, that are currently in use? And you can, for example, end a session. Uh, or you can change all the information related to the account. The group is uh, open by his configuration. Uh, his preferences uh, or the security about, for example, the policy password uh, and uh, the lockout policy rules. Same as for the mailing list, in which we have two different kinds of objects. There are standard groups uh, that basically are made up of different uh, members. So inside, you can type different member and add different member. To the, to the list. Or you can, for example, use uh, dynamic groups. Any kind, in case of a dynamic groups, uh, what you have uh, is a query that's allowing you to understand uh, what is uh, the, the, um, or the user that must be uh, inside the group. And one important feature when you create, uh, for example, one of these, is that 
You can also define uh, to hide this group or this email from the system. So, for example, you can have a hidden group that uh, is not available for the global address list, so no one internally can uh, use it. But uh, um, if he doesn't know the, the address, but you can also do more. So, for example, you can specify who will be uh, authorized to use this one. And this is uh, a neutral protection against spam. When spammer find the distribution list and start using distribution list to send a mail to several users. So, in this way, you can limit who can effectively use this, uh, this one. There is also all the options about, for example, managing uh, the class of service that are the way in which you can, for example, group different kind of user. So, for example, in this case, we have a class of service that is used to limit the quota of a set of users. And you can use also this uh, class of service to limit the server you want to use uh, to store your account. One of the uh, interesting features we are adding uh, uh, to our carbon infrastructure is uh, leverage on some technology that uh, was built for the cloud environment. So all the service, uh, in this case, we are working just on a single server, but it doesn't care because all the services are connected together through a uh, service mesh. So here, for example, you can see the local service mesh on the server that contains a lot of different processes. So each different process, even if we are talking about just one single nodes, is all set and is connected to this mesh. And you can see, for example, the status if one or more services are not working. So, for example, now I stopped this service. To see that, you can see the overall status of each single service. And all services were connecting to the service mesh. So, for example, if one user need to send an email, the connection between the mailbox, the user, and the MTA is not direct, but is through this kind of service mesh. This means that you can add additional MTA without changing the configuration of the system. So you don't have to do this. It's the mesh that is doing this for you. As part of the service, you see that there is also a lot of uh, exporter named uh, Prometheus. Because another important feature we think that uh, uh, is uh, needed today to better understand uh, one system is uh, the capability to store historical data. So Carbonium has been designed uh, to be uh, natively connected uh, with an historical uh, uh, system um, that are uh, a system that allows you to store uh, information and more information uh, using the historical data. So, see, not uh, the, just the single information, but uh, how the data changed during the time. So, we, are, we use Prometheus, that is a time uh, series database, that is automatically configured through the, the service. Uh, and is able to identify each single node and start collecting the metrics. And show, for example, in this case, there is one point that has some issue, and you can see that there is some issue about, for example, a specific service, like in this case. The capability to store historical data allow you not only to understand how the system is going, but also, for example, to connect uh, something like a Grafana dashboard that allows you to have in the idea of how the system is working. So, for example, here I see that uh, 
there are some message in the deferred queue. So I can see the overall status of the system, how it worked in the past, and if the current behavior is something that is just for this moment, or if in the past there is some spike, some issues is about connection. There, there are already a set of uh, Grafana dashboard that can be used, for example, to query the, the overall status of the system or to query particular information about, for example, the RDAP or specific services that are part of the Carbonium. As I was saying before, Carbonium is not a single product, but is a way, it's a, an entire infrastructure. And you don't have to manage each single component because uh, we are doing it. And uh, you can just uh, use uh, all those instruments to understand uh, what's going on. So, for example, if there is a spike or if there is a a different behavior in the user that maybe are using your system in a different way, like was in the past. So this is uh, more or less what we added uh, in uh, this uh, uh, in this version in order to give the admin the full uh, control over uh, over this system. Okay, Luca, and that was really very insightful tour and the dashboard is pretty much impressive and we are expecting a lot is coming and a lot new will be new things will be new features will be added into Carbonio and also in its dashboard. So thank you so much for, for this tour. Uh, I have a few questions while watching the admin user interface. Uh, I'm pretty much sure that all of our viewers who will be watching this video later will have questions on their mind too. They can ask their questions in our forums and different channels. So for now, uh, could you please go to the go to the admin user interface so that I can point out few options. Sure. Okay, and just to go to the home, then select any domain and uh, under then, then the general settings. Okay, I can see here that the uh, option the max number of accounts this domain can manage. Could you please okay. tell us a little bit more about this feature? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So suppose you are uh, an admin and you want to uh, delete or uh, manage a different kind of domain and be sure that uh, on uh, those domains there will be no more than a certain account of uh, uh, a certain number of account and certain number of space. When you create a domain, you can, so for example, here we are demo.kilco. We can define the maximum number of accounts the domain will be will manage. So le uh, left this uh, field empty, which means that uh, there will be no limits. But for example, I can say that this domain will have no more than 50 accounts. And I can also define which will be the maximum size of the data hosted by this, so for example, specific number, which is the number of bytes. So in this case, for example, this domain will host the maximum 50 account with a maximum of 50 mega each one. And uh, you can use this uh, to better check uh, the status, for example, for delegated domain. And you can also configure DSL uh, using single class of services, which, for example, I can specify class of service that limit, like in this case, 
the size of uh, the overall dimension of the system. So, for example, here I can have a console service that uses no more than one gigabyte of space. So, this will help about admin to create several domains and assign a certain number of account and of space to each domain. Okay. So, from my point of view, or uh... Or in our forums, I have seen and we have seen lots of uh, system admins uh, are as often ask us this, that that this kind of features like this feature can give them the manageability and the control over a single domain. Uh, often system admin manage multiple domains of their multiple clients in a single in a single infrastructure. So if they want to control the amount of account in for a single domain, they can use this feature and control the overall number of domains and accounts in an efficient way. Yes, exactly. So for example, once you have used this one, you can use this mailbox folder to check for each single account and the quota of the each account was used, and uh, in the upcoming uh, release, uh, you will be also able, for example, to download this data for further analysis to check uh, the the space used by each single user and each single account. Okay, thank you, thank you for uh, the clarification. Just one more thing, uh, can you go back to the authentication under the general settings? General settings, yes, the authentication. Uh, here I can see a option that try local management, local password management in case of failure with other methods. Uh, can you please tell us something more about this feature? Okay, thanks for the question. Well, uh, you know that nowadays, uh, uh, Several companies use uh, their own uh, identity provider. So this should be something that to really manage, for example, the user identity, uh, even if uh, if you are several different tools, so for example, a CRM, an ERP, or other stuff. So basically what uh, you can do in this case is configure Carbonio to not use uh, the local directory, but use an external system to authenticate and basically there are two principal products uh, so you can have an external LDAP compatible or an external keep directory that has a slightly different uh, protocol so here you can configure what is uh, the external DP that will be used to check your password and uh, this flag enable you to try to use a local password if uh, the remote one is not working. So, for example, suppose uh, the use case in which uh, your uh, system is not reachable for any reason, so, for example, for a networking issue, but you want some account to still be able to log in. So, for example, an admin. So, this uh, is uh, basically the, the meaning of this option. You can always uh, Check this uh, off, but this means that if your EVP is not more reliable, you will not be able neither to log in in that interface. So up to you, it depends on uh, internal configuration. Still, we want to give back the admin the uh, capability to choose their own uh, setup and uh, your, their own environment. Okay, thank you, Luca. Uh, it can be really helpful in some. Uh, in some different scenarios and I'd like to ask one thing that I can see a feedback icon on the bottom left of this of your screen oh I think you are very good feedback one yeah thanks yes the admin interface uh, has been designed for admin this means that maybe we cannot have uh, all the correct answer but the most important, we want to have 
admin feed like that. So using this button, everyone should will be able to provide a feedback about the admin UI. Here there are the data we will collect in case we want to use this tool. Otherwise, there is no uh, no data that will be collected. So here you can send some information, some feedback about, for example, how to change the, the behavior or which kind of feature you would like to see inside the admin console. And uh, in order to do, to do that, you have to explicitly uh, allow us to work the, this information you see there. There is, there will be no, no additional one. And uh, basically, this just help us to understand uh, the correct scenario, the correct behavior for some of the, the feature. So feel free to send us your feedback. Okay, thank you, Luca. Uh, basically, I like the feedback, uh, feedback option. Uh, it feels like at system means will be more connected to the backend or the masterminds that whatever their feedbacks are, whatever their opinions are, they can submit it through this feedback feature. So thank you so much for, for all this information. And the tool was really insightful and full of information. But I would like to convey our users' expectation to you through me that they are expecting a lot from Carbonio and hopefully we'll be able to deliver them the as per their expectation. So with that note, I'd like to request you to add something to conclude this session. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, uh, the feedback from the user is really important because uh, this product uh, has been built to Make them back again uh, the uh, direct admin of uh, the mail system. Uh, just to give you some hint about uh, what we are working on, uh, because uh, this admin UI is something uh, that uh, will evolve in the future, adding uh, more functionality. We don't want just to make this uh, a bunch of set of feature, but we want to add feature. Uh, in a way that uh, will be useful for the admin. So uh, we are already working on managing all the anti-spam, antivirus configuration to the admin interface, and also uh, allow the admin to be able to create and manage other admins. So create the delegated admins that are able to manage other domains. And more, uh, more features will came, so uh, still, feel free to uh, send us your feedback and uh, understand uh, what you would be, uh, what you would like to see in the next version of Carbonio. Thank you, Luca. Thank you for all the information, all the insights uh, you provided through this tour to all of our viewers. I would like to especially thank you for your time, for your patience and effort, and. I would like to thank all of our viewers who are watching this. Please do not hesitate to contact us with your opinion, with your feedback. Feel free to share this with your other peers and networks. With your opinion, we can enrich this Carbonio Community Edition and we can make it more user friendly, more useful to all of you. And with that note, I am Thank you all for taking part in this session. Have a nice day. Thank you.